working on his father Al's race cars and racing carts. During his career, he would win over 350 races, including four of his last five, and 30 track or touring series titles, which included two titles on dirt tracks. He was the Rockford Speedway Rookie of the Year in 1964. Aside from winning the track championship there six times, he would be the first to win the prestigious National Short Track Championships eight times. Joe was the first late model track champion at the paved Slinger Speedway in 1975. He won the Slinger Nationals four times in 1987, 1990, 1991, and 1993. On his way to earning four track championships at Madison, he amassed 66 career feature victories there. He was a Wisconsin Red, White, and Blue state champion at Turkana three times, winning the series in 1979, 1987, and 1989. Joe won two ARCO series championships in 1986 and 1989, and ranks third on the all-time feature win list in ARCO with 58 wins. Joe won the World Series of Asphalt Racing at New Smyrna, Florida in 1988 and 1989, and the Volusia County, Florida Championship in 1990. Joe was the Lacrosse Oktoberfest champion five times, 1972, 1989, 1994, 1995, and 1996. Joe also captured five ASA victories, including one at the Milwaukee Mile in 1993, and he won two NASCAR All-American Challenge Series races during his career. Many of Joe's victories came at the wheel of cars owned by Freddie Nielsen, which Joe drove from 1975 to 1984, and again from 86 to 1994. In 1996, even though he could feel his cancer returning, he won six ARTCO series races, plus five of six special events held at Kirkconnell. In 1997, following an operation to remove his lymph nodes, he continued racing with his final victory coming at Rockford, once again winning the Short Track Nationals. Joe was inducted into the Illinois Stock Car Hall of Fame in 2012. Joe passed away in 1998 at age 54. <clears throat> Presenting the induction award tonight to the Shear family is 2012 Hall of Fame inductee, Tony Strupp. <laughs> Inducted into the Southeastern Wisconsin Short Track Hall of Fame in 2013 is Joe Shear, and accepting the award tonight for Joe is his wife Connie and her daughter Carrie Shear Carlson. tonight, like Conrad said, a man of very few words, he'd probably say, I did all that. Sure. Really, when? <laughs> he enjoyed racing tremendously. Out of the 35 very deserving nominees here tonight, um, the subscribers to the Vintage Modified Stock Car Newsletter voted in 10, Joe being one of them, and I thank you for that. It's a great honor. Um, I have to go with my notes or I'll cry. 
Um, I want to congratulate all the other nine. It, it is just awesome to be a part of um, this um, museum and having Joe honored here. On behalf of um, my husband, he says thank you. As Racing Families go, um, some of Joe's children have carried on the racing careers, but in different ways. We haven't got a driver in the family, but his son, Joe Shear Jr., right now is a crew chief for a driver development team um, with Stuart Haas Racing. He has a stepson, Steve Strasberg, who owns and operates Race Car Help in Beloit, Wisconsin. And a stepson, Matt Strasberg, and now my grandson, Jordan Napper, um, all the way from North Carolina, has come here. And he helps in the shop, and so does my son, other son, um, and also at the racetrack. And with that being said, I would now like to introduce our daughter, who has also stayed connected with racing through the ARCA Midwest Tour, where she is a media relations director, and she has some very special words to say. Thank you. Um, first of all, in true sheer form, I almost didn't show up tonight um, until I got a message from Mr. Brad Miller. And he doesn't realize that, um, but when he asked why I was coming, that made me get dressed, and when he was giving me fashion advice, I realized I better just get dressed and run um, out the door. So, um, I guess I'm coming here with a little bit different perspective than everyone else that's been up here, because um, I heard all the stories um, that got my dad to where he was. I mean, obviously, I was there for a lot of them, but um, for me, now, I see the legacy that he left behind and how it's still impacting um, racing. I had the honor of writing a series of stories leading up to the Joe Shear Classic, which is held at Madison every spring, and um, I was asked to write a series of stories about him. And so I had to come up with my own ideas, and one of my favorite ones was about how he has influenced so many drivers that are still racing today and they're up and coming. And um, back in the day, you know, he was a big influence on Mark Martin's um, driving. And my mom told me earlier today, if, if you know my dad at all, he was a perfectionist. His car was always perfect. And uh, he, he had a car for Mark Martin. Mark used to drive for him. And his biggest issue with Mark, with Mark was that he would always brush the wall. And he hated that then you have to go back and fix it um, every week uh, and stuff like that and then ironically Tony when I found out he was doing this my dad and I were standing at the fence at Slinger one time just watching practice or whatever and he just sat there and he kept watching Tony and then he just looked at me and he's like how does he do that and I was like I have no idea what you're talking about so um, then he goes out on the track and he's out there by himself or whatever and I see him just mash on the gas um, right in the middle of, of turn four. And he spins himself out. And I was so embarrassed. I was like, come on, Dad. You're out there by yourself. And you spun out. Um, he comes in. And I was like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm trying to figure out how Tony can step on the gas so soon. But obviously, I haven't figured that out. And uh, so I'm kind of glad he went back to his own driving style after that. Um, but anyway, he. Uh, as, as his career came to an end, one thing that he did was he, he really paid attention to the younger drivers that were up and coming, and uh, he was never afraid of being replaced. Racing against all the young guns, he just looked at them as fresh competition. Um, and so, as I came up with that story earlier this year, I was thinking about um, drivers like Matt Kenseth and and Scott Wimmer, and some of those those Wisconsin drivers that he he impacted so much. And Matt, if you know his personality, uh, he used to sign his hero cards and write all kinds of crazy stuff on there. Um, but he was always writing, "Would you please retire um, or retire soon now?" You know, stuff like that. Um, but the funny thing is, is that Matt and my dad had a very good relationship on and off the track. Um, uh, Matt would come to my dad a lot. Um, for advice or whatever, but it would be also too kind of as a taking him under his wing kind of deal. They used to go golfing. Um, 
they stunk at it, but they used to go golfing together a lot um, and just kind of hang out outside the track. And, and um, Matt has mentioned a time or two that my dad was one of the most influential people in his career. And that really means a lot um, considering Matt's success these days. Um, Scott Wimmer used to come over to me and say he was all excited because he got to touch Joe Shear's car. Or Joe Shear actually talked to me, stuff like that. And I always thought that was strange, but then I, I looked at it from a driver perspective and those young drivers and, and how much my dad meant to them um, to be able to compete against him and do it, do it competitively. Um, and there was one driver who was telling me a story um, about how he, he had got, he, he was starting in front row and he went over to my dad to ask for advice about, um, you know, any advice on starting in the front row is first time. And um, my dad just uh, looked at him and he said, it's the worst place to be because it's a lot harder to hold everyone off and it looks way worse when you go backwards than when you go forward. And um, when I wrote that part of the story, I had to laugh because, um, but I left the name out and that driver was Ashley Jr. And um, I just know that anyway, those of you who know our new little Al or his dad and that family, I know that um, he was one of he was one of those drivers that my dad was watching and knew that he would go far and so and that's just a memory that I will hold on to forever because I just remember him laughing and smiling and telling me that, and I thought that was pretty funny. Um, other than that, I mean, that was probably the biggest thing I remember as um, the years went on was just that my dad wanted the sport to continue. Whether he was here or not, he was always looking for those drivers that were up and coming, and he would, you know, make a point to point them out. Um, he would um, even go over and talk to him. And like Conrad said, he uh, was a man of few words and he didn't usually go talk to anybody. But he would go over and, and talk to him, see how they were doing and stuff like that. So it was pretty neat to watch, watch that um, as his career came to an end. Um, and so I just wanna thank everyone for voting for him as well. And um, it's just such an honor to see his legacy continue on in something like this. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, I just want to say one thing about Joe. Uh, in my career, I got to know Joe early in my racing career. Um, if you look up on the board, in uh, 1975, he won the uh, championship at Slinger Speedway. And I was young and I had late models, but he'd come to Slinger and blow my doors off. And I thought it was a pretty good racer, but the only way I thought I could beat him is Joe would sell me his car. So at the end of the season after Rockford, he won that. And uh, I called Joe up and uh, being the quiet guy he was, I always related to Joe as Al McCoy type guy. If you got to know him good, like Conrad said, he would give you information. But at that time, I wanted more, so I thought if I get the car, he comes to Slinger, I can beat him. And that was just a leaf spring Demco car at that time, nothing really, a stuff car with a big block. So I go down there, it's hard to even hold a conversation with Joey, he's so quiet and in his shop. He gives me a price, but I wanted all that paperwork with the car for setups in. Of course, in 1976, that's when I won my first championship at Slinger Speedway with the same car I bought from Joel. So, and he gave it to me right the way he took it off the track at Rockford. So, and I wanted it just that way. And it was a good car. And uh, actually, I went, that's when we had a run dirt. I won at Hales Corners with it. I won at Cedarburg. Turned it over to Slinger and won there. That's, that's when I won the 12 in a row at Slinger. Joe's car. Of course, he left us way too early, but I'll tell you how determined that guy was. Um, I was at Rockford Speedway, I think it was maybe his last race, kind of, second last race, and they helped the guy in the car. He was down to 
skin bolts, the cancer got him so bad. And he could just cry being a fellow racer to watch this guy. And believe it or not, it was 200 lap uh, nationals at uh, Rockford Nationals at the end of the year. And he won that race. So that was Joe Shearer. This guy's seven, right above you. Congratulations on having your dad inducted. Fame was early for you. Uh, thank you. It means it means a lot. Um, it's it's always it's always an honor when he's recognized for his accomplishments. Um, you know, sometimes you forget all the wins that he had and and all the success that he had until somebody puts it all together into something like this. So it's a really, really, really amazing thing. What did it mean for you to have some of the other people mention your dad the way he did? Dana? Yeah, that was that was great. Um, Conrad Morgan. I mean, he pretty much listed off every name. I could think of uh, as far as his competitors, but to hear Conrad and Tony Strupp talk about um, my dad's influence on their careers and driving his cars and winning in them, that, that was really cool. That's a, that's something I had not heard before. So that was that meant a lot to me. Did the, the, the turnout of this kind of thing surprise you at all? I mean, you said yourself you didn't, didn't think you were going to show up. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I heard it was sold out, and I was like, oh, my word, 500 people. I mean, that, that's pretty amazing that there's that many people out there who who care about stuff like this and the history that goes into things, you know, like the Hall of Fame. Uh, obviously, your dad had a stellar career. Did you really think that you'd be able to get in not one but two Hall of Fames? You know, I guess I didn't, I didn't really think about it. Um, he really loves you know, you don't. You, I don't think you'd really think about it until you get the letter in the mail or whatever saying he's being inducted in into this or, or that. And you know, the one in, in Rockford in Illinois that was that was pretty cool because um, you know that's that's where his career started, Rockford Speedway, all that kind of stuff. When I heard about this one, I was a little more surprised, I guess, until I started thinking about all the success he had in the Wisconsin tracks. And so to see him inducted in Wisconsin and Illinois and just representing the Midwest as a whole is really cool. And to be able to have a legacy that's going to carry on for the ages now. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it.